This is the best 360 camera you can buy, the Insta360 X4. However, you should get this instead. I went ahead with my own money and bought the Insta360 X4 a few weeks ago when it was announced so I could go and use it for doing behind the scenes filming when I'm on my shoots. And well, is it something you should be picking up as well? Let's go on with the headline features first and of course that 8K image. That without a doubt is a big improvement over the X3. Without doubt, the extra resolution makes a huge difference when dealing with a 360 camera because of course you're cropping in on the image. So you're not ever using the entire sphere of the image. You're often cropping in and it ends up being quite low resolution. Hence you need a higher resolution to start with. 5.7K never really felt enough, but 8K definitely is there. And in good light, it is noticeable. It looks great. In good light, it looks nice and sharp and looks great. You can move around this, the image, zoom in, and even then you still have plenty of resolution to work with. However, as soon as it starts getting a bit too dark, I'm not even talking about very dark situations, just like say in an interior space, then that's when the image does start to fall apart and suddenly the upgrades of this camera don't look so special. Now to be fair, Insta360 fully admit that on their camera itself because it actually recommends in your low light situations that you switch across from the 8K to 5.7K purely because there's just absolutely no reason in shooting that at higher resolution and taking all the extra storage whereas actually the lower resolution is going to handle the noise reduction much better. For me the question isn't about whether this is a good 360 camera or not. It is pretty much the best one you can buy. After all Insta360 pretty much own this market nowadays and this is their latest and greatest and it's definitely better than the previous one. Is it worth the upgrade? Well, I think for most people, probably not. If you already own an X3, yeah, the extra resolution is nice, but I don't think for the type of thing you're using it for, it's gonna be really that noticeable or matter that much. The bigger question is whether you even need a 360 camera and the problems that they present. In theory, they fix so many issues when trying to shoot behind the scenes, for example. That's my personal case in terms of using a camera like this. I want to be able to capture it all, not worry about where the camera is pointing, uh, just hit record, let it run, and then later on pick the best shot so I can mix it together into my edit. Well, sadly that's not really the case. That's what you think happens with a 360 camera, but in reality there's actually quite a bit of processing that you have to go through before you get your final video. Now don't get me wrong, Insta360 have done a great job with the iPhone app as well as the desktop app in terms of being able to pick your angles, uh, in terms of the playback is very smooth. It does a very good job of that. However, despite that, it's still a time consuming process to go through all the footage, um, find the angles or track yourself so you can have the movement going where you want it to go, set keyframes. It's not a big surprise, that is all a time consuming thing to do. It is a bit quicker doing it on the phone because you can use the motion sensor and move around. But even then, you end up just watching the entire thing back. So it's almost like you have to reshoot the very thing that you shot in 360 in the first place. Which does beg the question then, are you really saving much time? The AI is there to help you out, both built into the camera itself as well in the software. And it does a fairly good job. The issue I had with it though, often it would frame slightly incorrectly, it would like track my body for example and uh, crop my head off. Not ideal, you know, I'd imagine most people if they're tracking someone they want to be able to see their face in the shot. And with all the stitching and combining together, any long files do take a long time to export out of even the desktop. That's the other real issue that you'll face with this. It's great if you just want to grab little clips and there are little things on the camera to help you with that. Things like pre-record and uh, markers, which I highly recommend you use if you're going to pick up one of these cameras because it will save you a ton of time when it comes to the editing process. But otherwise you do really need to stick to short clips. Long clips are a bit of a problem when dealing with 360 footage, which is a shame because that's pretty much ideally what I wanted to use this thing for. I want to be able to put it on and let people watch a good like 10-15 minute clip of behind the scenes and I can move the camera and follow the action. I may, I may still do that in my full final review so make sure you subscribe. I'll discuss about how well that's worked. I think really what it comes down to is it worth spending money on this camera when you could upgrade your iPhone. 
For me, if you're spending £500 on this, which is the price here in the UK, I would highly recommend that you put that towards upgrading your iPhone first to the iPhone 15 Pro or whatever the latest one will be. That, you're gonna see a much greater upgrade. You're gonna have so much use out of an iPhone 15 using the Blackmagic app, using the Apple Log, which is absolutely incredible. You get so many great results out of that. Really amazing looking footage that you can actually use professionally, but also just looks so nice and you just wanna put it into something and uh, mix it up with stuff. Whereas with this, as fun as it is, it has many frustrations. And I just don't think this is where you should put your money first if you're looking at upgrading your camera gear. Without doubt, this is very much a nice thing to have. It's fun, it's cool, and if you're looking for a 360, it's the best option you can go for. However, if you're in two minds about this, I highly recommend just don't get it. Go for something else instead. Upgrade your main camera, upgrade your phone, as I mentioned. You're gonna be much more satisfied with the upgrades that you're gonna get from those things than you are from purchasing one of these. And you're not gonna have the frustrations that a 360 camera brings along. That said, if you really wanna shoot 360, well, this is definitely the one to get.